Hi, my name is Andrew Banson from Civil Survey Solutions. Welcome to this video presentation on Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler. Infrastructure Modeler has been developed for GIS, planning professionals and project engineers. The software allows users to easily create and visualise accurate models, evaluate design alternatives and communicate proposals. In this overview of Infrastructure Modeler, I will be taking you through the entire process. I will import GIS data that was originally created in MapInfo and visualise this data in 3D. I will then lay out a conceptual design, do some quick analysis and then produce a final video sequence. We will be visualising the entire municipality of the City of Belmont, including surface data, aerial photos, buildings, roads and footpaths. This is making use of the existing data owned by the City of Belmont and we would like to thank the City of Belmont for allowing us to use this data. I'm going to get started by importing a terrain model into my project. This terrain model was created in Civil 3D and exported out as an Autodesk IMX file. To import this file, I go to my data sources section and add an Autodesk IMX file. Now although that surface has now been added to my project, before I can see it, I need to make sure that I configure the surface. Highlighted with the yellow exclamation mark is the geolocation option. I need to make sure that I specify the correct coordinate system for this terrain. When I select close and refresh, the software will process the data and display that terrain for me. The next thing that I want to do is import a raster image which will be draped over that terrain. I go back to add a file and this time I select the raster option. The file I want to import is called landgateaerial.ecw. Because this file contains coordinate information, when I select to open this file, the image will be imported to the correct location. However, as you can see, the image is currently not draped across the surface. I need to go back in and configure my surface, and under the source section, select my draping options to drape. I then need to go in to my image and refresh it. As you can see, the image is now draped across the surface. If I zoom up to this river, you'll see the image draped along the banks. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, bring in uh, all the buildings. Um, now, if I go across over to my import area, um, I'm going to bring in a SDF file. Uh, now this information was originally uh, uh, exported out of MapInfo as a tab file. I brought that data into Civil 3D and then I uh, exported it out uh, to an Autodesk uh, SDF file. Um, so if I select Import SDF, I have a SDF file called Buildings 2 and if I open that loaded into my project. Now just like the surface underneath the status area currently says that it isn't configured so I need to right click select configure and this time I can see a number of, of places um, with the, the uh, yellow exclamation mark I need to specify the location so I just pick the coordinate system there. I need to tell the software um, what type of data I'm bringing in. In this case, it's buildings, so I select buildings from the list. 
The other thing I want to do when I bring in these buildings is set a style for them. I can set a style up um, for the facade, I can set a style up um, for the roof. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, I'll pick on the style for the facade. I've got a number of different um, options here that I can pick. Uh, I'll just pick a random facade. Um, now, I mean, when the buildings go in, uh, all buildings will receive this style. However, I could uh, later on select uh, an individual building and override that. In fact, later on I'm going to uh, uh, bring in an image and uh, drape that on the side of a building. So I also need to pick a roof material. So I go back to the style chooser, go to the roofing folder, and there's a whole bunch of different materials that I can pick for the roof. Um, I might just go for this Spanish tile. So when the buildings go in, I want uh, I want them to be draped onto the, the the surface. So if I head across to source, I make sure the drape is selected. Now, as part of uh, the the original tab file um, that held all the data for the buildings, um, the elevation, uh, or sorry, the the height of the building had been recorded. Um, now I've got a few options here um, for the roof height and for the slope. Um, in regards to the, to the roof height, I can actually pick and tell the software to uh, use the building height, which had been picked up. Um, that property had been uh, picked up and stored in that tab file. Um, in regards to the roof slope, I'm just going to pick uh, 22. And now I can select close and refresh. Fresh, and those buildings uh, should be imported uh, into my project. They should be draped onto the surface with those styles assigned um, and the building height information is coming from that data. Now that I have my buildings uh, imported into the project, uh, what I'm going to do is just edit one of these buildings and, uh, and change the facade on it. Uh, so at the moment it's, uh, it's got the, the, the original style that was assigned to it. Um, what I'm going to do is head over to the style palette and create a new material and attach it to um, this facade here. Now the easiest way to work with uh, styles in infrastructure modeler is to uh, make a copy of one that's already there and then just edit it. So I'm going to make a copy of this fence material and then edit it. And I'm going to change the image to one I downloaded off the, off the web, but of course you could take your own photos, um, bring them in, it might be an image of the actual uh, building on site. Now uh, the next thing I need to do after inserting the image is uh, set the width and the height. Um, uh, at this stage I don't know the width and height for this section of the, the building. Um, what I could do is use the measurement tools in Infrastructure Modeler and work that out. So um, that edge is about 35, it's about 18 metres high. So if I go back in and edit that material, you can say the width is about 35 and the height is about 18 metres. Click OK. Uh, the next thing I need to do, this is quite simple, um, is just drag and drop an image onto that section, onto that wall. And there you can see that I've draped um, that image onto the building. Next thing that I'm going to do is uh, add in my footpaths and my road data. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to open up the style palette. And if I head across to the street folder, you will see all the different styles that I can um, apply to those objects as they uh, are inserted into my project. Uh, the footpaths will receive the sidewalk style. 
uh, for my roads I want them to uh, use this particular style uh, minus the sidewalk so I'm going to create a copy of this style and edit it and I'm just going to remove the sidewalk um, this dialog box allows me to set the width of my road uh, it also allows me to set up the profile for my curb um, I'm not going to go into that detail I'll just select OK um, and then what I'm going to do is just rename that style that I created and I'll just call it standard road Do. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, import my roads data. Uh, similar to the buildings, it's an SDF file. So I'll select roads.sdf. Um, and then I need to go in and configure the roads. So I start off by picking the coordinate system. And then I need to tell the software that these objects will be roads. I need to drape those objects onto my natural surface and then I need to apply a style and I'm going to tell the software to use that style that I just created called standard road. So if I click OK and then go close and refresh I'll see those roads inserted into my project. And the cool thing about this is as the roads uh, intersect the software uh, forms that intersection Okay, so now to the footpaths. Um, it's a similar process to importing the roads. Import SDF. This time I select footpaths.sdf, open. I need to then configure my footpaths, so I select on footpaths, right click, configure. Set the location, coordinate system. Uh, the footpaths will go in as road types. I will drape them to the surface and in regards to the style I'm going to pick a sidewalk style. Click OK and then close and refresh. Okay, and then you can see my footpaths have now been inserted. Now to the fun part, uh, Infrastructure Modeler has got some great tools for doing some um, conceptual planning um, and layout. Uh, what I'm going to do through this area is uh, create a proposed new road and I'm, uh, I'm going to also insert a uh, proposed building through here. It's very much like using SimCity when you use these tools. Um, what I'm going to do is head over to my Create Edit toolbar and start off by laying out a new road. So I select the Create Roads command, pick the style I want to use, and then I simply point and click to position this new road. And once I've finished, I just press Enter. In order to edit the shape of this road that I've just created, uh, if I select it, you'll notice that I have a number of grips um, that are shown. Uh, if I use the, the purple cube grip, I can change the horizontal geometry of the alignment. And if I use the blue cones, I can change the vertical geometry of the alignment and you can see as I've lifted the road up the software has uh, we're showing the batters back to the natural surface there. If I want to insert a building, very similar process, um, this time I go to the create buildings option, I pick a style that I want to use and then I simply lay out the shape of 
this building. Press enter once I've done. If I want to set the height, I can use the blue cone to change the height of that building. If I want to edit the building properties, all I do is I select the building, pick on properties. I can change the, uh, the style for the roof and for the facade. Um, at roof slope, I can override that. I'm going to make it 22 degrees. Since I have auto update ticked on, uh, that change has been made straight away. Adding some trees is also very easy to do. All I do is go up to create tree groups, um, pick a style, and then I just uh, specify the location for these trees, press enter. and then the software has created them for me. I can size those trees using the blue grip if I want to raise or lower them. The other cool thing that I can do is add some water areas. Um, these could represent rivers or, or lakes or swimming, swimming pools or, um, or whatever. Um, so if I go back to my creation toolbar. This time I'm going to select create water areas. There are some styles here. I'm just going to, um, I might go for this default water area and then I can simply lay out an area for some water. Press enter. and then you can see the water created. Very easy to edit. Once again, I just select on the object and then I can use the grips to, uh, to push that around and change the shape of that water area. So as I mentioned, um, there are some analysis tools in Infrastructure Modeler that I can run. Um, if I go across to the Analyze section of the ribbon, um, I can do a, visibi a visibility um, line of sight check. Um, for example, I might be wanting to know from this particular location how this new building is going to affect my site. So if I select on the Select Visible option, uh, it highlights everything that I can see from that point. And if I hover over to the other side, I can see the objects that I cannot see. Um, they're the objects that aren't highlighted in yellow. If I want to uh, check out the shadow casting, I can do that also. Um, all I do is run the shadow casting option, and then all I need to do is set um, the time of the day or the time of the year, and then the software will cast that shadow for me. Infrastructure Modeler also gives users the uh, ability to export out a uh, video or create a, uh, a, a slideshow. Uh, this can be done very easily by using the uh, show motion options. Uh, what I'm going to do is quickly create a, um, a, a short video showing this new development that I have laid out. 
So what I do is I select to create a new sequence and I can give that sequence a name. And hit close. And then all I do is go around and, and take shots. Um, the software will join up all those shots to form the, the sequence. So I add a new shot in. I can set a, a speed for it. Go 80 kilometers. And then I just go zoom around, taking different shots at certain locations. Zoom up nice and close to that road. And maybe take a couple more shots along here. And then one final aerial shot up the top. If I want to play this sequence that I've just made, all I need to do is hit play. As I mentioned, you can uh, export out your sequence to an, an AVI file. Um, this is very easy to do. Um, all I need to do is go over to the show motion panel, hover over my sequence and run the export command. Uh, the dialog box will load up. I can set the uh, resolution for my video, uh, the encoder and then the location to save my AVI file. All I need to do after that is select record and then that video will be produced for me. Now if you were looking for a more detailed photorealistic video, you would then use 3ds Max to produce that, uh, which is also included in the infrastructure suite. Using 3ds Max you could uh, animate um, models of cars driving along the road, you could have people walking along the street um, and objects flying through the air, um, you could simulate rain, um, precipitation. So it is uh, very easy to connect to 3ds Max. Um, yeah, there are two options you can use. First option is by exporting out an FBX file or I can have a live connection to 3ds Max. What I'm going to do is define a region that I want to connect We'll bring across to 3ds Max. The software will then load up 3ds Max for me. If I head over to 3ds Max, um, the software will automatically connect to Infrastructure Modeler and bring in the, the scene that I had, I had outlined. Um, as you can see, that scene has been brought in to uh, uh, 3ds Max. I now have a live connection back to Infrastructure Modeler. So as I said, 3ds Max would be used to create a more detailed scene, um, which could include some animations, um, weather, um, and then that scene could also be exported out to an AVI file. Thank you for watching this overview of Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, feel free to call us on 1300 254 004 or you can visit our website at www.civilserveysolutions.com.au. Thank you.